HRD Industries LD6 versus Gigaparts Pota 2020. Today we go side by side and compare both of them to see is there really a difference with carbon fiber masks and what are the differences between these two carbon fiber masks. Let's get started right now on Ham Radio Dude. Taking a look first at the Pota 20 from Gigaparts, this carbon fiber mast is advertised as a 10.09 ounce, 17.5 inch collapsed, up to 20 feet fully extended mast, which contains a 1.25 inch diameter, and finally 17 sections. When we take a look at it here on the bench, I do want to point out the error on the mast, which shows 16 inches collapsed. And if we do measure this out, it's actually 17.5 as advertised on the website. So not a huge deal. If we take a look at the scale here, the scale will show 11.26 ounces, just as we see here. So there is a difference in the weight from the website to what we're actually seeing as well. If we look at the total overall length, I would say that it's probably just shy of 20 feet. I think it's around 19 feet, nine inches. And when we're talking about the diameter of the mast sections, the lowest mast section has an overall diameter of about 30.3 millimeters. And if we were to flip this over and take out the top mast section, we'll notice that the top mast section is about 3.8 millimeters at its thinnest point. The wall thickness on each section of the mast is approximately 0.9 millimeters. Finally, I do want to point out that there is not 17 sections, there's actually 18 sections on this carbon fiber mast. If we shift over to take a look at the LD6, we're going to notice the overall length with this cap right here is about 15.5 or 15.25 inches with an overall weight of just over a pound. We have a outer diameter on the bottom portion of the mast at about 37 millimeters. And on the top section, which is the 20th section and the last section of this mast, we have approximately 4.5 millimeters in overall diameter. The wall thickness on each section is roughly the same as the POTA 20 at about 0.9 millimeters. I made the observation on both of these masks that taking the top off should be done with care because sometimes one section comes out with the POTA 20, for example, and if you pull it out too hard, there's a potential somewhere that this might break. The same thing happens here with the LD6 though. I had previously said, hey, if you pull on this, you'll take the cap off. And that's actually horrible advice because you create instability when you're pulling on this, right? So hold it and just pull it. And then there we go. It's very important to mention. Now the LD6, the top actually comes off. So if you wanted to take all these sections out, you could just remove this top here by pulling on it gently while holding the bottom portion of that mast. With the POTA 20, it appears they use some sort of adhesive to bond this really nice injected molded eyelet on. Now, the problem that I see with that is one of a few things. If I ever want to take all the sections off, I just can't do it without using like acetone to try to dissolve the adhesive. And that becomes a little bit concerning. I don't want to do damage to the carbon fiber. And I don't know that acetone would be a good option. However, even with this eyelet on, you could still take most of the sections apart. To remove any mass sections, all you do is unscrew either the caps on the LD6 or on the POTA 20. And the caps are very much alike in the aspect that they're threaded. And the one difference I notice with them is the POTA 20 cap doesn't have a hole or a ring on the bottom or on the top like the LD6 does. My best guess for that is to kind of show you that what happens if there's no hole on the bottom. Nothing really, unless there's some kind of air that's trapped inside. And if there's air trapped inside, it creates like a hydraulic. I don't really think that that's a huge deal, but I did want to point it out. I got to apologize. This camera's kind of really messed up. If we take a look at the LD6 on the top and the POTA 20 on the bottom, we will notice differences in finishes. There is a smooth, clear coat on the LD6, whereas there is coating on the POTA 20, but the carbon fiber is still, you could feel it. It's grooved, you could feel it. Now, I want to point out though, we now have a top section for the LD6 when it was just a prototype and it has that same groove or same pattern for the carbon fiber and it's just not finished. 
So this is what I had as a prototype. And this is what I had when it went to production. My thought on this is that adding a layer of gloss like this and making it smooth adds just a little UV protection, even though neither of these should be used outdoors. Outdoors for permanent use. It is nice to know that there is a little bit of protection. As far as the mast goes, these sections are roughly the same diameter. And if I am to apply pressure on them, they both fluctuate just a little bit. I would say about the same. The quality job on the POTA 20 is a little bit better when it comes to the flares. Each section will have a flare, which prevents the sections from disconnecting when fully extended. And as we can see here, they both have lines and markings for the flares. However, the Gigaparts POTA 20 is sanded down nice and smooth, where mine is more defined. I also think it's fair to mention that when I refer to a mast as mine, that's because the HRD Industries is my brand and this is my mast. However, if you're looking to get into amateur radio, either of these masts are going to do just a fine job. And we'll continue on here showing you. Both maps were fully extended and then shucking around to see if they could withstand things like wind. And both masts did just fine. For both the POTA 20 and the LD6, I've created two different spikes, which you could put into a PVC tube, unscrew, take the spike out, screw back into the end, and then stab into the ground. You then place your mast over each of those spikes, and it's a nice portable option for mounting your mast. You can go to thingiverse.com, download and print them yourselves. It's very wise when you're mounting an antenna to have your mast on the ground or over that spike, put the antenna and clip it in and then hoist it up. You don't want to try to hoist it up, having it on its side and then adding all that extra stress to either of these masts. With the POTA 20, the eyelet is a little bit smaller. And if you have an antenna like the real portable antenna, check out my video on that below. You might have an issue getting everything to click. It clicks in, but it doesn't move around. This doesn't feel good. So instead, I recommend that you get a smaller S-Biner, S-Biner, and then you can clip that in first and then attach something like your real portable antenna. In today's scenario, I used a dipole. When it comes to the LD6, it's 550 cord or nylon cord, and basically, Even the real portable antenna just clips in with enough room for it to fluctuate and move around. All of my testing with the Explorer was done in an inverted V or a sloper configuration and fed half wave because that's typically what I'll operate when I operate portable and I think that's what the majority of people will also operate with. No matter what investment you were to choose, it's kind of important to know how to use it. And we're talking about the mast being in the air and we're gonna put, let's say a dipole up top. You might expect to see the dipole or rather the mast bend slightly because we're putting weight on the top. And the one thing I'd wanna point out in either of these cases with the LD6 or with the POTA 20 is you're gonna have your guy wires that are gonna hold this off in an inverted V, for example, and you don't want to let your coax just come down because that's going to add a lot of weight and stress to the top. That's not necessary. Instead, what I do is I take zip ties along the mast and I tie them down. This also prevents some guy from walking right into this, pulling it down and snapping your mast. Now, when we speak about mast, we speak about maybe the flexibility. And if I had to tell you, there might be a little bit more flexibility in the LD6. However, they're both pretty comparable. Now, having more flex could be a better thing because you have, for example, wind, right? It's going to be more resilient to wind or getting bent around. However, looking back at this video today, and if you want to go back, you could check it out. I would say that the bend on each of these are roughly the same. Before we conclude, we have to talk about price. And the LD6 comes in at $67 plus tax and shipping. The Explorer 20 comes in at $98.95 plus tax and shipping. If you would like to save a few dollars with the Explorer 20, 
you got to find somebody who Giga Parts will actually give an affiliate link to and use their affiliate link. You might save a couple of bucks. But furthermore, if you want to save on shipping, what you could do is get above that $99 threshold. Go to the closeout items on Giga Parts website, add the cheapest thing, which is about nine cents. That'll put you over $99 and get you free shipping. As we conclude today's episode, you got to see two masks, the Explorer Porta 20 and the LD6 from HRD Industries. And you were going to ask me, well, which mask should I purchase? And I'm going to give you that generic answer. It depends. But I will explain just a little bit further. If you're the person who's hiking mountains and you're looking for the lightest weight possible, the Pota 20 is the way to go because over time, those four ounces, it's significant. If you're looking for the most compact mass possible, it's the LD6. Of course, we spoke about price, and I will tell you that both of these objects are very comparable in quality. I have shown you differences in quality on both of these masks, and then I've showed you some similarities like the wall diameter of each section of the mast. I do hope that this gives you a better idea of what each of these masks will do and gives you a better option and idea of what you want to purchase. I highly encourage you to go do your research, check out other LD6 videos, check out other POTA 20 videos. Thanks for watching the channel. You take care. Have a good one. <clears throat> All right, don't use my hands. Don't use my hands.